Coming up next, On the Spot. Star Wars Episode 3 hits theaters in just a couple of weeks, and the gang is hoping to recapture their enthusiasm for the franchise. A first look at Star Wars Battlefront 2 should help, and there's always those new Halo 2 multiplayer maps to fall back on. Senior Editor Jeff Gerstmann is accepting all challengers in Unreal Championship 2, plus we've got the latest on Medal of Honor European Assault, a live demonstration of Metal Slug 4 and 5, and two fistfuls of the aforementioned Leandre conflict to give away. Finish it. We're live and on the spot. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to the show. I'm your host Rich Galvin. Joining me today is Jeff, Jeff Gersman. How no, are you doing, man? I'm uh, doing well. You're Jeff. That's How's what I am. Welcome. Yeah, it's good to be here. It sounds like we got a great show today. Yeah, we do. I'm uh, over here playing Unreal Championship 2 and uh, looking for some competition. How can people find you if they want to hop on? And uh, did, did the last guy just drop out because yeah, you were thrashing him too much? I, I Is that what I'm saying? pretty right bad now? and he quit. So uh, right nice. now I'm just in here alone. Uh, you want to look for the gamer tag Game Spotting on, uh, on Xbox Live. Add that to your friends list and uh, join up. Let's do it. And you're just running around right now. You're, you're in a match waiting for people to hop in and yeah, try something. Exactly. Huh? And right now, no one is willing to let try him, something. Let him try to jack me. So you're, you're, you're Come up, you're, at me. You're Come up, at me. You're up three to, to nil. There's not, it's not like zero, it's just three. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's cool. Well, later on today, we'll be giving away right here. There's you. There's you running around right now. We're going to give away five copies of the game. That's a lot of copies. I wasn't sure game. how many copies we're going to have, so I said two fistfuls of games. Yeah. Two fistfuls. That five copies. One, two. Of, two, boom, fi boom. two fists. Yeah. We're going to be giving all those away later on at the end of the show. We're going to be announcing the winners of last week's LEGO Star Wars competition. Awesome. And we're going to be talking all kinds of Star Wars. There's a lot of Star Wars action lately, huh? There's, a, there's like too much Star Wars action. It's almost like there's a movie going. coming out. It's all, you, you would think that there's some yeah. sort of commercial tie in for all of this Star Wars. I don't know. That you would I don't think, know. maybe. Yeah. Possible. I don't know. We're also, of course, be taking questions from you, the viewers. Are, my favorite part of On the Spot is hearing from you guys. So if you're a GameSpot Complete member on the bottom of the page right here, fill out the form, send your question, they'll run them on over, and we'll ask them here. I'll ask Jeff, you ask me, ask whoever. We'll, we'll shout them out. We'll get answers for you. And we already have some. We'll be hearing from them in a little bit. But right now, Jeff. Uh, shameless plug time. Okay, let's do it. Shameless plug time. Right now, there's a certain awards uh, for the internet going on right now. What are they called? Oh, the Webbies. Yeah, right. those things. I heard yeah. of these. Yeah. yeah, what are they? Do you know? Um, the Webbies are, you know, they're an annual you know, awards event, and basically they break up a bunch of websites into a bunch of different categories. So uh, there's a, like a best celebrity website category. Okay. Uh, BruceWillis.com is up for the award there. <laughs> Obviously. Which I, I hadn't seen a lot of these sites when I went to go, you know, investigate the Webbies. Mm -hmm. And uh, BruceWillis.com? Yeah. Amazing site. Real? What's on it? There's a blog from Bruce Willis talking about stuff. He's like, well, here's, you know, I'm TiVo and Family Guy, and here's this other stuff. Bruce Willis, Bruce Willis is amazing. He, he is. Truly a multimedia assassin. <laughs> also, however, you might find there's, is it rela games related? Yes, there's games related. There's a games related category. If you go click on that, you, uh, you'll see GameSpot. Uh, we appreciate all the votes. And if you want to know how to find the Webby Awards, where do you go, Jeff? Uh, head over to the GameSpot community. Up at the top, there would be a thing that says, vote for GameSpot. Please vote for GameSpot. Please. And, uh, you know, you can click over there and get to the Webby's website and uh, check out all they have to offer. And uh, you can also vote for BruceWillis.com if that's your thing. And there's a whole bunch of uh, CNET Properties as well up there. Yeah, there's, some, going you know, there's, there's, there's so, a whole yeah. there's a whole lot of great sites. Up you'll there. find you'll find a lot of cool stuff on there, and uh, you you wonder where all the great sites on the internet go. There, you'll find yeah, it. Go to the yeah. webbies, you'll find them all. And you'll click around. It'll be a good time. Vote for, for, sure. for vote for GameSpot. Yeah. Vote for GameSpot. Yeah. All right, cool, great. Now let's move on to the game, shall we? Has anyone joined up with you yet? Uh, one guy joined in and uh, killed me while I wasn't looking. Oh, oh that's talk cheap. About Bruce Willis. That's totally cheap. Yeah. Maybe it was Bruce Willis. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> genius brilliance from Bruce Willis. He heard I was muscling in on Lindsay Lohan. And he had to do something. The sure. Yeah. All right. Why not? The uh, all right. So look for the games. Uh, Xbox Live Gamer Tag Game Spotting. We'll watch. Oh, what happened to you there? Uh, that guy has uh, what they call the U damage power up, where you do double damage. So when I rushed him, uh -huh. he just killed me. That's cool. We'll, we'll, we'll watch this battle and then we'll see how you do. And we'll come back and we'll talk some more about Unreal Two because it's a good game. Am I allowed to call it Unreal 2 or should I call it Unreal Unreal Championship, Championship dude. Unreal Unreal Championship there's there's too. so many different Unreal games. All right, there you go. Good kill right I there. I cut that dude up. That's cool. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of great games coming up soon, and uh, one of them coming out on June 6th, which will be the 61st anniversary of D-Day, actually, oh. is uh, Medal of Honor European Assault. Cool. And right now we have a developer interview for their game on the site, and here's a clip. Check it out. Assault has the most riveting storyline to date. In fact, the storyline uh, that we follow is the journey of a character named William Holt, an operative for the Office of Strategic Services. The OSS was created by Roosevelt in the early 1940s in order to compete with the Germans' intelligence agencies. They were really 
progressively advanced in their technology and we wanted to try and find out what they were doing and so he started an organization called the Office of Strategic Services which later became the CIA and uh, the OSS operatives were really known as shadow warriors uh, they fought the secret war we like to believe that you can through our game European Assault fight the battles that you never knew and the war that you thought you did Since the beginning of Medal of Honor, we've worked very closely with a number of military consultants, and our number one military consultant is a gentleman by the name of Dale Dye, a retired captain in the Marine Corps, fought through 31 major combat operations, and in fact is a, not only a military, uh, passionate military consultant and, and a historian, but also allows us a great deal of insight inside the head of a soldier. And in fact, Dale has been fantastic in inspiring some brand new features to European Assault that we feel make the game very relevant and allow the authenticity of being inside the head of that soldier to be very real and immersive for all the players. That's a look at the concept of the game and many of the characters you'll meet along your journey. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for Behind the Lines 2 where we'll delve deeper into the key features of Medal of Honor, European Assault. And we are back, and you can look for European Assault June 6th, 2005 on the Xbox, PlayStation 2, and GameCube. Looking good. Looking good. Speaking of looking good, what's going on over here, Jeff? Uh, you know, some more people jumped in the game here, and uh, it is, once again, on. Nice. Now, what can you tell us, Walt? Now, unfortunately, i got to point out right now, you were winning, obviously, but you put the, you put the Gamertag game spotting out there, and you ask people watching the show to play against you, you're pretty much just putting the big bullseye on you. So right yeah, now, we're really less. looking it's at like, like a three-on-one match right kinda, now, pretty much, right? kind of jumping all over me. I'm still winning for now, but uh, we'll see how long that lasts. They're, they're cutting me down pretty good. Codename 13, is that David Duchovny, you think? Was I he think it might be. You're talking about Bruce Willis? Yeah, it probably was. Him? I think he might be up for the award, too, but... You know, DavidDuchovny.com's lame, whatever. <laughs> You've never seen <laughs> DavidDuchovny.com. All right, fine, I haven't. But I, I just know, in here, in here. What can you tell us about Unreal 2, the game? Well, right now we're looking at some great Xbox Live play. What else does it have going on? Well, basically, you know, the big deal, I mean, the Unreal series has been around the block on the PC. And uh, what they've really done this time is changed the game almost completely. You know, there have always been first-person shooters. Now it's a third-person game. And on top of that, it's not just a shooter anymore. Now you've got swords, you've got melee weapons, so you can really kind of go at each other on a level that you really couldn't do on the PC-based first-person shooters. Okay. So it, it gives the game kind of like a, a more of a like a fighting game feel in a couple of spots. And, uh, you know, that influenced, actually, you know, Midway put this game out, and since they do Mortal Kombat, you know, right. Epic was able to kind of draw from some of that stuff. So you can actually turn on the Mortal Kombat announcer. Oh, no way. Which is really cool. And then you can unlock Raiden uh, if you're, like, crazy, super good at the game. Now... Crazy super good. Are you crazy super good enough to unlock Raiden yet? I'm getting there, dude, but it's rough. It's, you know, rough. it's like playing the game for the review. You know, I'd, I'd put the game through its paces, beat the single player mode, you know, beat the bots on their highest difficulty, but you have to beat challenge mode. All these challenges, like 22 challenges, 18 challenges, something like that. And you have to beat every single one, and they just put you in these messed up situations. Like, like what? Capture the flag where you're down by three when you start, or all this. They, they basically stack the odds against you and force mm -hmm. you to win and win fast. So, you, like Running Man. Yeah, more or less. Pretty, it's pretty like much. Richard Dawson is somewhere <laughs> behind the scenes making all this happen. And, That's cool. Uh, you know, I love Richard Dawson. His site at richarddawson.com is fantastic. Again, but it's no <laughs> BruceWillis.com. You're sending people right now to some obscure site. Yeah, you, those, I'm sure none, those probably aren't even the exactly, original site. Exactly. Yeah, this, oh, yeah. We have some questions here. James Bonkowski in Mission Viejo, California. What are the coup de grasses, a.k.a. fatalities, like in Unreal Championship 2? Uh, and does Raiden have any of his classic MK moves? Uh, the, the coup de gras moves are basically, yeah, they're, they're, again, another MK influence. That They're sort of like fatalities in the Mortal Kombat series. Mm -hmm. And what happens is you can actually stun people with uh, charged-up weapon blasts or some sword moves. And uh, once you do that, if you lock onto and pull out your melee weapon, you can basically input a little fatality, like a little thing comes up, a little button sequence, mm -hmm. and it asks you to, to press these buttons, and then it has a little kill move that uh, comes out. They're not, you know, as inventive as Mortal Kombat fatalities or anything like that, uh -huh. and every character only has one, right. but uh, they're still pretty cool, and they, they don't unbalance the game, which I think is important. 
because you can actually just stun someone with full health and uh, do them immediately, but it's pretty hard to do. So, it, you know, it doesn't really upset the balance of the game. I think we saw someone do one to you when you were yeah, stopped and talking I was to me, talking which is, which is kind I'm of trying nice, to sneak up behind somebody and stun them right now. So what about Raiden in his, uh, in his MK moves? Is there anything we're going to recognize in there? There's the a Kudugra right there. Oh, very nice. Um, oh, stuck him. Oh. He blew up. I stuck my sword in him and he exploded. Just Obviously. like real life. And that's what happens in the future. Uh, Raiden does sort of behave like you would expect Raiden to behave. I mean, mm-hmm. it's not like you're going to be... You know, doing the Superman move across the arena all the time or anything like that. Right. You know, it's got it's got some of the animations that you'd expect Raiden to have, and and uh, that that's really what's important is it, it feels enough like Raiden to matter. I think really all I have to do is put the Mortal Kombat voice guy in any game, and it'll feel like a Mortal Kombat game. Yeah, totally. That, that'll get you. All right, uh, one more question. Is there something about? Uh, are they releasing more maps for this game soon? Um, I don't know about soon. I mean, the game comes with like fifty oh, right out it? of the gate, or you know, mm-hmm. they they say over forty. Um, in testing, I saw some of like the downloadable content stuff, and basically, uh, you'll eventually be able to download like alternate skins for characters, and then they will unlock a few more maps, I guess. Um, and it's it's perfectly conceivable that they could be supporting this with uh, like premium content that you, you'd pay for some maps or something like that um, somewhere down the line. But you know, we'll have to wait and see what happens. I, I assume, given given that uh, Epic's track record for supporting games post release is really strong, that I'm sure we'll see something. Great, cool. Should we move on to Star Wars? Yeah, Star you, Wars. You keep playing this game right now. Okay. Yesterday on the site, we got to announce an, an exciting new game. Yeah. Star Wars Battlefront 2. Yeah, Battlefront 2. That's Battlefront, totally like one of the best Star Wars games in a long time. So it, it's cool to see a sequel coming. I think that and Republic Commando are definitely a sign of good Star Wars games to come. Mm-hmm. Battlefront 2, for those of you who didn't play Battlefront 1, basically it's just... It's like Battlefield, could you almost yeah, say? Yeah, it's like a stripped-down kind of Battlefield yeah. game with, with Star Wars thrown in. Like, real console-friendly, though the PC version was pretty good, too. Um, and, you know, you don't see a whole lot of the Battlefield-style game on consoles, so, you know, Battlefront was kind of unique there. And we also, uh, we also had a developer interview on the site right now with uh, Shara Miller, who is a producer of the game. Awesome. And before we, you know, steal all the words out of our mouth, let's hear from her. Cool. Check it out. Well, when we were thinking about the sequel, there was a lot of stuff that we wanted to do for Battlefront 1 that we just, for whatever reason, didn't have time, didn't know what people were going to be into, so there was some stuff that we held back on. So for Battlefront 2, we really paid attention to what the fans said. We read the forums, we we got the feedback from folks, and we all played it, and and we listened to our friends and our family, and we just... we. We took all that feedback into account and said, well, what do people really want? People really wanted to see some space action. And that's one thing that people always associate with Star Wars, is getting out there in their X-Wings and their TIE Fighters and, and just playing all those amazing vehicles that you see in the Star Wars battles. Jedi. That was a big thing that Battlefront 1, as awesome as a game as it was, I think a lot of people were like, you know, I just want to get that lightsaber in my hand and I just want to see what that feels like. So we had some Jedi, lots of discussions about how to put Jedi into Battlefront without, you know, overpowering overpowering the soldiers on the battlefield and of course we are lucky enough to be coming out in an episode three year so this is the last of the star wars movies so we really wanted to make sure that we got some great episode three content and their content in there so there's going to be some stuff that you see in the movie things that you got a little glimpse of in the movies that you're going to really just be able to explore a lot more fully in the game along with some amazing set piece stuff from the movies so people who were fans of the original battlefront will be totally happy with the second one. We're not taking anything out of the original Battlefront as far as great action, great content, all the vehicles that you love, the units that you love, we're only adding into that. So one of the major things that we're adding is a unique single player story campaign. So you're going to be following the story of uh, something that begins around the episode 2 time frame and goes all the way through uh, Return of the Jedi. So there's going to be a, a storyline and you're, you're going to get to know a lot more of the characters and develop a an attachment to the characters and an attachment to your uh, to your legion in Battlefront 2. So that's going to be exciting. And then in, in addition to that, we're taking Galactic Conquest from the first Battlefront and we're really adding some very exciting stuff that I can't really tell you too much about yet, but please keep looking out for the future because we have some great stories there. And just like that interview we had with Dan Winters earlier, uh-huh. the interview with Shara Miller, there's more available on the site. Hot! You should go watch that after the show, but not now, because not we're now. still doing a show. Yeah, we're over here. That game looks pretty cool. It does. Space Battles. Yeah, Space Battles. That's, that's a pretty big addition, I guess, you know? Yeah, it's nice to take it. Even they have the weird, like, ex- old X-Wing from yeah. Episode 3, but it looks like it moved pretty well. Yeah. I guess. And uh, the big thing, which actually you will learn if you go watch the rest of the interview, is that they're boosting the number of players online. Okay. PlayStation 2. Yeah. 24 people can play this game against each other oh, online. That's, that is a lot. 
I think that is more than any other PlayStation 2 games is ever really? supported. I, I'm trying to think. SOCOM must have had a bunch. No, SOCOM of is 16. Is it really? Yeah. Xbox 32 and PC 64. Nice. That's a lot of stuff. And That's, the game's coming out this fall. Yeah. Jedi throwing in the mix. Jedi, now, the, Sith, all that crazy the, Star Wars, modern Star Wars nonsense, all that crazy stuff. Exactly. There's a whole preview on, on the site as well, that, along with the interview that we recommend you read. Check out the screenshots as well, um, and you'll learn much, much more. Yeah. Like, Jedi, the Jedi aren't Terminators. Really? Unfortunately, yeah. Okay. But, and there will be a whole bunch of Episode 3 stuff, which is okay. No, no, no way for spoilers because the game isn't coming out until the fall. Oh, nice. Speaking of spoilers, though, yeah, I heard in this movie coming out in May, Anakin Skywalker totally turns into Darth Vader. What? Yeah, no dude. way. He dude. totally turns into that Darth Vader. That guy's like a little kid. He's like some emo punk or something. No, How can he, he be the baddest he is, man he is alive. Totally, he's totally Darth Vader. He's like over listening to some Saves the Day record or something. He, he, no, he totally, he totally is. It's true. I don't believe it. Right, I don't well, believe it for a second. Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith comes out May 5th, 2005. 555, which could have, could have sworn Nostradamus said something crazy is happening then. Yeah. Maybe this is I think it. he said that there was a Star Wars movie coming out. Is that what it was? Yeah. And there's a multi-platform smorgasbord coming alongside it. Xbox, PlayStation 2, Game Boy Advance, PSP, DS uh, versions of the game. Yeah. And out now, there's a version for your mobile phone. Yeah. AKA there's there's something phone. like... Nine different Star Wars Episode Three applications coming out for mobile phones. Really, like this year? Nine of them. They're, they're like there are games. There's ringtones. There's all the stuff. We recently did uh, some coverage of that stuff. That, so, like, if you're into Star Wars and phones, uh, yeah, there's everything coming out for for phones for Star Wars. So, you know, ringtones, wallpapers, games, everything. I, I know our man Brad is huge up on the Star Wars, and when that trailer finally came out for the yeah. movie, he watched it like 20 times. He yeah, just, he, he was just, just like nonstop. He's like, hey, I, I haven't like, seen it. I haven't seen the trailer. You haven't seen it yet? No. It's a good trailer. Speaking of good trailers, we have a full preview and a trailer for the Star Wars Episode Three game on cool. the, on the site right now. Right on. And uh, just to save you some time, we're going to show you the trailer right now. Let's see it. All right, cool. Check it out. Fear for Anakin. Clouded is his fate. Strong is the dark side now. Looking for us. Dude, I told you. See, okay, they, they all right. They flashed Darth Vader over him. I, I, okay, I buy it now. Now you buy it? Unless that was some sort of camera trick that you threw in there. But that, that trailer looks awesome. Yeah. I, I have no desire to see the movie, <laughs> but that game looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. And what's cool is that the game, what we know so far, you can learn from the preview, is that it's like 16 levels. You get to play as Obi-Wan on some levels. You get to play as Anakin on some other levels. Cool. And uh, you, you roll through, and that means you get to be a good guy. And yeah, since Anakin turns into Darth Vader, you get to be a bad guy, too. 
Do you get to be a good guy, then a sort of bad guy, then an all the way bad guy? I assume so. And maybe you get to listen to that music you're talking, what you're talking about. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Maybe that's the level. There's an this emo, is like an emo level where you just finally level. snaps. And there's also a multiplayer dual mode that you cool. unlock, and you can play as General Grievous, which is the badass robot with lightsabers. Okay, yeah, that robot with lightsabers. Yeah. I'm sold. All right, cool. We got some questions, some Star Wars related questions here. Uh, let's see, Battlefront 2, John, uh, Josh Gooden in Grottos, Virginia. What are some of the new modes and vehicles we will try out? And will there be any exclusive characters on different pr- platforms like in Mercenaries? Well, new modes and vehicles, the big thing is uh, space. Like space combat. Space yeah, combat, so you saw there. X-Wings and, and all that crazy Or whatever they call the yeah, X-Wings yeah, right. in the 20 years in the past whatever or whatever. Be... And, uh, and you get to be Jedi. Yeah. So yeah, for more, check out the preview. And uh, for exclusive characters, we don't know yet. But Yeah, uh, no, I, I'm going to take a stand here and say yeah. probably not. Probably not? You're just going to say probably not? Probably not. All right, cool. Um, yeah, cool. Maybe Han Solo will be in it, but like he's supposed but, to like, be. But yeah, like as a kid or something. Yeah, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> All right, uh, Rob Tremuto, he, uh, he, he's from Houston. Sorry if I said your name wrong. Even though this is the last of the movies, do you see George Lucas and game publishers continuing the story through games like KOTOR? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, they're gonna they're, they're gonna go where the money's at, and the yeah, money's they're at gonna, they're continuing gonna, to do no. Star Wars stuff. Either they'll yeah, I mean, they're still doing stuff based on the like the original right. three movies. You know, I don't see why they would ever stop doing stuff set in this universe ever. Why not? The games sell, and uh, the quality of them kind of all over the I place. Wanna, but they've I want getting better lately. So I want a GameCube Conga game where uh-huh. you're like the blue guy from Return of the Jedi playing the the keyboard. I would. Totally, that'd be that great. Game. I don't know if be all right. Uh, Peter Peter Robal from Miami, Florida, with the Return the of the Sith state. game. It is yeah. no, it isn't. Yeah. With the Return of the Sith game, follow the plot of the movie. So will there be spoilers in it? Yes, and yes. Yep, yep. Plenty of spoilers. But the game comes out at the same time as, as the, the movie. Yeah. So if you go see the movie early and then go get the game, you'll be fine. Yeah, it was and like we, it was a bigger worry with Lego Star Wars, which yeah, is out, which now, was out so, right. Yeah. And uh, do you think the cell phone game has spoilers? Do you know? Uh, yeah, I think it, it, so. it's definitely going to be more. I mean, I don't know. I've never been one that gets. All crazy about movie spoilers, but right. if, if you're like super sensitive about spoilers, yeah, even the mobile game probably has more than you would want to see. Right, cool. Final Star Wars question before we move on and play some Metal Slug Four and Five on the PlayStation Two. CM Lugo in uh, Geburg, Maryland. I think it's near Old Bridge, maybe. Yeah. Being a longtime fan of the Star Wars universe, expectations are super high on the third and final installment of the series. How is the gameplay out? Since we all know Vader's going to kick much Heine if the game doesn't deliver... Uh, here's a real question. If the movie doesn't deliver like the first two, do you think this hurts the series as a whole, or can we do a Metal Gear and act like some of the sequels never existed? You know, I mean, Star Wars games have been so detached from the Star Wars movies. It's like there were good Episode One and Two games, oh, or yeah. good games coming out around that time, even though those movies were trash. Right. So Episode Three could be great, it could be garbage. Either way, the quality of the games... Uh, varies accordingly. And Republic so. Commando is a great game. Yeah, that ties yeah. in with that. Yeah, yeah. Any any universe that is created, there is a game developer out there who can come up with a cool game yeah. to put in it. Even if the people making the movie can't. All right, let's move on. What do we have in our hands right here, Jeff? Metal Slug Five, uh, part of the two disc set of Metal Slug Four and Five for mm-hmm. the PlayStation Two. So uh, now Metal Slug, that was an arcade game back in the day. Yeah. So if you hung out in uh, bowling alleys or bars or other like unsavory environments mm-hmm. that, that had games or like our, you know our employee lounge you would see a metal slug machine uh, it's, it's all neo geo hardware so it's all basically running on hardware that's over a decade old mm-hmm. um, but what they do for these home versions is they actually do clean them up a little bit i mean the, there was a lot of slowdown in the, the later Metal Slug games on the neo geo you won't find that here though no. they've actually gone and cleaned it up which nice. is uh, pretty impressive now these games are known for like they're crazy. Like you get to fight like Hitler, pretty much, don't you? I, I, you, you fight all kinds of stuff. Mm-hmm. The, the games definitely got crazier as time went on. Mm-hmm. Uh, they started out, you know, pretty standard kind of military theme oh, game. You got you know, but, oh, I got stuck. Oh, I got stuck real savage. But uh, you know, like Metal Slug X, Metal Slug Three, Four, mm-hmm. and Five, they just got crazy. You know, now it's like you're you're riding on the backs of camels. You're just picking up all kinds of crazy stuff. They definitely don't take themselves too seriously with the development of the game, right. which is it's a good idea. Cool. Great. It's a good-looking game. It is a good-looking game. Now, actually, what surprised me is that I thought that all the Metal Slug games came out in, like, the early to mid-90s. No. And yeah. Yeah. Not, when not did when did Metal Slug 4 and 5 come out? Let's see. It came out... Uh, Metal Slug 4 came out in the New Year's in 2002. Yeah. And, and then 5 is... Like, like one year old. old. Yeah. yeah I, so I, had no, I had no idea. Yeah. There's still someone out there probably right now working on a game that runs on Neo Geo hardware. That... Which is insane, but its, it's days finally are numbered. You know, despite being as as old as it is, you know the SNK people, the King of Fighters games, they're probably going to move on to uh, you know the the Atomus Wave or, or some other form of arcade hardware. Cool. 
Great. And this game, and the PlayStation 2 version of this game they're playing right now comes out on May 15th. Yeah. And the Xbox version comes out on August 15th. Yeah, and uh, I believe there's going to be some Xbox Live support in the Xbox version. So really? So a little multiplayer co-op maybe, or, or maybe it's just scoreboards. We'll have to wait and see. By the way, I, I, I learned early on, by the way, you don't use the analog sticks in this game, do you? No, no. It's, you know, it's an arcade game. Man. Sure, arcade you got to yeah, you gotta use a D-pad. I'll look out, for, the, oh, look out for the grubs. They're grubs. Freaking me out. Oh, dude, I'm totally oh. getting squished. Oh, no, I'm not. Baseball slide. All right. But shall we move on? Yeah, sure. All right, great. This is a great game. Cool. Lots of fun. Now, we were playing a. We've been talking a lot of Xbox games recently. Yeah, there, it seems like there just has been a whole lot of great Xbox games lately. There has been. And there was a certain great Xbox game that came out a while ago, which a couple of kids watching the show may have played, called Halo 2. Halo 2. Have you heard of that one? Is that like a. It's this game where you shoot... a skating game? Yeah, you shoot a bunch of people, actually. Oh, the shoot dudes game. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Anyway, Halo so 2, yeah. as you're talking about how Unreal 2 will hopefully have some content added on later... Yeah. Halo 2, new content. New content for Halo 2. They had an update earlier this week for gameplay. Can you tell us anything about that? Yeah, so the, the Halo 2 gameplay patch, basically, they're seeking kind of rebalance the game with it. And uh, they're doing things like shortening the fuses on grenades making melee attacks a little bit more powerful, trying to maybe make the game a little more unpredictable. There were certain combinations of weapons that I guess Bungie felt were just a little too powerful. Mm -hmm. So with this, they'll kind of inject, uh, hopefully, a little more randomness into the game because you know if you get a guy up close, you can just crack him with the butt of your gun and, and, and do him in real hard like that. Um, so you know, hopefully that'll bring some much-needed variety to the multiplayer. But that's not all they're doing that for the game. That is not all. What else are they bringing? Nine multiplayer maps. What? Nine? Nine new multiplayer nice. maps. So, yeah, these are going to be rolled out uh, over the course of time. There's going to be four out initially. Two will be free. Two will cost some money. Mm -hmm. And then there's going to be an additional five maps released uh, June, late June, like June 28th. Yes. And then at that time, they're actually going to release a disc with all nine maps and like some additional video content or something like that to retail for 20 bucks. Cool. Um, so you'll be able to get it uh, you know, any way you want. If you don't play on Xbox Live but you still want the maps for System Link or mm -hmm. whatever you're into, you can just pick it up at retail. If you play on Xbox Live, though, you can get access to these maps early, and uh, that seems like a pretty big uh, benefit. Nice. Yeah. And we actually, our, our, some of our editors got to go up and play some of these maps already. Yeah. And there's an interview on the site with our man Brian Gerard from Bungie who Word. said much of the exact same things that you just said. But uh, I like hearing it from him. Fine, I'm be that way. I'm going to be that way. So cool. here's a clip from the interview. Check it out. Uh, quite a few things going on over the next uh, several months. Um, it's kind of broken up into multiple multiple tiers. So stage one is the auto update itself. So uh, the auto update is uh, is essentially uh, it's got two big components to it. On, on one hand. Uh, we have uh, sort of a collection of fi fixes and updates that are primarily aimed at uh, improving uh, the online experience by uh, negating most of the cheats and exploits that people are using today on Xbox Live. All these things we're totally aware of. We've been working uh, behind the scenes, researching, testing, um, finding ways to go into the game where possible and actually make these things not, not able to be done anymore. So, so the second half of the auto update uh, is essentially a couple gameplay tweaks and enhancements that, that we're going to do to the game to create what we all feel is a, is a more fun and more enjoyable play experience. Specifically what we've done is we've, we've gone in and we've looked at melee attacks. Uh, in Halo 2 currently, uh, melee attacks are really not an effective part of anyone's game. Um, by contrast, in Halo 1, a melee attack was was always a go-to option whenever you were in close proximity to an opponent. Um, and that was something that we never really intended to kind of go away in Halo 2. Um, so one of the things we've done is actually increase the damage done by melee attacks. The other big thing that we've done is we've taken grenades and we've actually boosted them up a little bit. Um, the grenades will now do more damage and the timer has been shortened just slightly so um, they blow up a little bit faster and they're a little harder to escape. And again, uh, it's all about giving the player more options and leveling that playing field. So if you're not dual wielding, you have something else to, to, to use to your advantage. So once the auto updates out, uh, our next plan is to go ahead and get four maps released. Uh, those will be available on Xbox Live. We have uh, two maps that will be available uh, free to gamers. Um, those maps are Containment and Warlock. Um, and on the same day, we have two additional maps coming out, which will be premium for purchase maps. And those maps are called Sanctuary and Turf. Very soon after that, we'll be actually updating all of our playlists on Xbox Live to incorporate the new maps. Um, uh, shortly after that, then in June, Halo 2 multiplayer map pack is slated to come out, and it is a collection of nine new multiplayer maps for Halo 2, along with a documentary video that showcases uh, 
kind of the people and the creative process behind making these maps, um, as well as uh, a small cinematic featurette that was produced by our cinematics team that's a, a kind of a side story of a, a bit of action that happens in the old Mombasa part of the Halo campaign that players never actually saw on screen. Um, and that disc will also contain uh, the auto update for Halo 2 as well. And we are back. It looks pretty fun. It does look pretty fun. Halo 2 Online stuff's pretty crazy. Yeah, I got way into Halo 2 Online right around the time of its release, and then I ended up giving it up in favor of newer stuff. But yeah, I'll probably go back to it. Now, well, as we said, that's just a clip from the interview. Yeah. And you can see much more of the interview on the Halo 2 Game Space after the show. And one of the parts that we didn't just hear is that he said they're going to reset all the online rankings. Yeah, well, there have been some cheaters and some other stuff, and mm -hmm. with the balance adjustments, I guess it only makes sense to just kind of uh, wipe the slate clean and start fresh. They said if you're good, then you'll shoot right back up the rankings in no time. Yeah, totally. Cool. Joseph Jezior in Virginia wants to know, what are the four maps that will be released this month? And I have the list right here. The two free, free maps are called Containment and Warlock, uh -huh. and the two maps that will cost you five ninety nine for the pair are Turf and Sanctuary. All right, three dollars a map sounds like a good deal to me. That's not bad. Yeah, Mark, it's a would you say it's a microtransaction? Could you call it that? No, microtransactions no. are like two cents, stuff like that. <laughs> you know? uh, Marcus Stewart, Knoxville, Tennessee. Will there be any extra features attached to 1999 disc that will be on sale in June? Uh, there'll be some additional video content that remains to be seen. What exactly it is? Well, I think what they said is that like there's an interview that, and a making of. There's a, yeah, there's a making yeah. of thing, and there's some sort of uh, cutscene, like a side yeah. story, not a new ending for the game, but uh, a side huh. story. Yeah. Sure, that'd be cool. Yeah. All right, great. Shall we go to the big finish, wrap it off some questions, give some prizes away? Sure. All right, great. Here's our first question. It's from Andrew Burwood in Belfast, North Ireland. All right. WrestleMania 21 is not out in the UK, but I've been reading about the Xbox Live features not working. Is there any news on fixing this? I've heard that they may recall the game in the US. What's up? Uh, well, yeah. We you know, ran into this problem. We got a hold of our retail copy of the game as well, and I actually have it set up here. Um, it's one button press away, so you can all see exactly what happened. So this is what you're this about to what, log in Yeah, to. so I'm, I'm about, I've selected the account name I wish to use. I'm about to hit A and log into what would normally be the lobby for the game. Okay. Uh, so let's hit A. Okay. That's basically the same error message you would get if uh, you didn't have a network cable plugged in at all, I think. Really? Um, so it's like it's not even getting out to try to connect to a server or something. Okay. And I'm no technician, but that, that's sort of what it seems like to me. Um, so between that and, you know, the game's not built for content downloads, so it's probably not built for patching, uh, I think a recall seems pretty likely in this case. Wow. Um, there's some pretty messed up stuff in this game. The review uh, will be up momentarily. It might actually already be up, so after the show, you know, check the site and, uh, and read that. But there's, uh, there's definitely some pretty serious problems in the retail version of WrestleMania 21. That's a bummer. Yeah. All right, cool. Some more questions. Okay. Moving on from WrestleMania. This is from Aqua Neo in Canada. The Aqua Neo? The Aqua Neo. Man, awesome. Do you feel EverQuest 2's announcement of hosting sales for in-game items for real money to be the start of other massively multiplayer online role-playing games to do the same? And what are your feelings on this? Uh, I'm not sure how I feel about it. When I first read the announcement, I was kind of torn up because I think that that's filthy. It's just dirty. It's like you're playing these games to play them. It's like, why go buy a, a top-level character? Why go buy all these so rare what items? What exactly are they doing? Basically, for okay, so it's been happening underground for mm -hmm. quite some time, where basically, you know, either on eBay or on other auction sites, people are selling in-game characters and items for real money. Okay. Um, and, you know, it happens with every game. World of Warcraft, City of Heroes, you know, what have you. Any massively multiplayer game, you can find some site that's going to support uh, auctions of this type. So for the longest time, and Sony, is, Sony Online Entertainment has been like the biggest one, they've fought to shut these auctions down, they've sued the people responsible, you know, they're canceling accounts if they're found to be, have been used in some online sale, and now they're just kind of saying, eh, you know, some of our players want to do it, so we're going to start uh, you know, doing it. And I have to imagine they're probably going to make a little money on the side for listing these or, or something like that. Right. But uh, you know, the one thing this does combat is that you know, a lot of these sites are so shady that uh, you, know, you are getting ripped off. People that are out there trying to spend money for stuff are getting ripped off. So right. you know, by putting the Sony name on it, making it official, hopefully they'll be able to stop that part of it. Um, I guess they probably just threw up their hands and realized it wasn't something they were going to be able to stop, so they might as well just co-opt it and uh, put all the shady underworld people out of business in the process. Cool. That's Ma crazy. So you think the record industry should do the same thing with music, or instead of shutting down every single... Hey, you know, who knows? Who knows? We're talking about games here, people. Yeah. AVR in Ohio. With the release of the PSP in Korea on May 2nd, that's soon. That's 
right around the corner. And their bundle will include web browsing software. Yeah. When do you think we will see this here in the U.S.? Uh, unknown at this time. Hasn't been an, I, I have to imagine we'll eventually see a browser disk. If not a browser disk, then like another firmware update that integrates a browser into the mm -hmm. PSP. Um, but yeah, it, it seems like something that you know they won't wait too long before bringing it out here because uh, you know people are already doing the shady stuff with Wipeout yep. and, and kind of showed you how to do it on the show. Yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Um, so I have to imagine it won't be too long. I, I'd say by the, I'd, if I'm guessing here, and I am, mm -hmm. I'd say by the end of the summer we'll probably see cool. some kind of network. Maybe we'll learn some more D3, maybe. I bet we'll learn more D3. Now, if they made a browser disk like you're saying, mm -hmm. now the surfing they can do online with the PSP right now is very minimal. Like you can't handle Java, can't handle Flash. Right. Do you think if they made a browser disk, would they be able to create some program that could handle all this? I'd say if they wanted browser. to, they certainly could. They could. And I have to imagine that whatever browser they're releasing in Korea is at least a little bit further along than the one that got thrown into Wipeout. Right. Because th all they need to do for the Wipeout one is it needs to be able to display this page and download files to the memory stick. It's, you know, so they don't need much functionality for that. And uh, you know, in experimenting with that browser, you do run into a lot of limitations. I imagine that they'll probably incorporate you know, a few more modern browser standards, but I don't know that they'll be playing Flash files or anything like that. That, that seems like maybe a little bit too far. Cool. Those are some good questions. Yeah. Thanks, everyone, for who wrote in this week. And we'd also like to thank uh, Dan Winters, Charlotte Miller, and Brian Gerard for appearing on camera for us. Now, let's get, let's get to giving away some yeah, stuff, we got, we? Some, we got some games. We yeah. got some Lego Star Wars. We got some Unreal Exactly. You, you start thinking about a trivia question for this. I'm going to announce the winners for okay. last week's trivia contest. Last week's trivia contest was a little tricky. We asked, it was, it was kind of an open question, uh -huh. who is the baddest Jedi? Oh. Now, I had one in mind. Yeah. Apparently, not that many people agreed with me. Because not enough people got it right. We had like several hundred answers. Yeah. And uh, my answer was Luke Skywalker. Sure. He's, because he's not like the original, not the first one, you know. but the, when he gets a Jedi and he gets he turns mean. Yeah. Like he's a he's a bad dude. And he's, yeah, he's yeah, yeah. and he makes dead. it out. You know, there's like there's some tougher looking guys, but they all yeah. just end up getting cut down. Exactly. And uh, so a lot of people wrote in with stuff like Darth Maul and Darth Vader. And last time I checked, dude, those guys are Sith. They're yeah. Not, they're not Jedi. That's, that's technicality that's... in your face. Ooh. All right, burn. However, we did get six people who won themselves copies of Lego Star Wars on three different platforms. And uh, what did they win? How did they win? Well, what we, kind of answers did they get? Exactly. Well, exactly. Everyone, two people did agree with me. So Taylor Parks of California, you said Luke, you get an Xbox copy of Lego Star Wars. Also, Christian Griffin of Maryland, he also said Luke, we're sending him a PlayStation 2 version, all right? Cool. Cool. Now, one guy, Andrew Harris in New Jersey, he actually said you. Me? Yeah. Well, yeah, I could see why someone would think that. My force push abilities are pretty good. And check this out. Dude. I'm not even going to pretend yeah. anyway. All right. All right. So he gets a PC version. And uh, also, Anthony Penny of California, he actually said the baddest Sith is Vader. So he said Yoda was the baddest Jedi, but he actually uh, also ID'd Vader as a Sith, and he was the only person in these 700 emails to do that. Uh -huh. So uh, he gets himself a PlayStation 2 copy. Sounds good to me. Now, these last two copies were given away. Two people entered this, and I had to think about it for a second why they said it, and then I realized I'd seen some art, and I remember seeing the cartoon. Two people said Conehead Guy. And if you've seen it, there's a Jedi who's straight up a Conehead Guy. Really? Yeah. He's got a mustache like, and everything. Like Beldar. Yeah, pretty much straight up Beldar. Beldar is a Jedi in episode in the new movies. But anyways. Awesome. Muhammad Al-Najjar of Texas. You won yourself an Xbox copy of Lego Star Wars. And Herman Hahn, don't call him Solo, of New Word. York, PC copy for saying Conehead Guy. Right on. Cool. Dude, give away those games. Okay, so trivia question for this is going to be, who are the two characters on the front of Unreal Championship 2? Ooh. We have enough uh, information up on the site about the characters, mm -hmm. character feature, all that stuff, that you should be able to find them out there. They're pretty much the two main characters in the story mode. So uh, tell me the names of these two characters, and you will win one of five luxurious copies of Unreal Championship 2 for the Xbox. Nice. And, of course, include your full name and mailing address. Yeah, all that stuff. And we'd like to thank the fine folks in Midway for hooking us up. Word. It's great. It's a good game. It is a great game. Cool. And you should check out the review. Also, and as Jeff said, come back, uh, check the site later for the WrestleMania 21 review, as well as you should go check out the full previews and interviews that we have for the various games mentioned on the show, like Battlefront 2 Episode 3, uh, Halo 2's map expansion, some Metal Slug stuff, European yeah. stuff. There's a lot of stuff. There's all kinds go of stuff. Go check it out and send us in some questions. We'll answer them next time. Jeff, thanks for coming by. Thanks for having me, Ralph. I'd like to thank the crew for doing such a great job today, and we'll see you next time right here on the spot.